Now, if I were to show you a spark plug, a lot of you would probably know what it is and roughly what it does. Is that it sparks and it ignites the fuel air mixture inside the cylinder, causing your engine to run. But do you know exactly how and where that spark comes from? That's what we're going to be talking about today. How an ignition coil works and how it generates the high voltage to create the spark in this spark plug. Hi, I'm Kyle with DIY Auto Home School, and here is our look at exactly how an ignition coil works. Now, to understand how the ignition coil generates the spark that jumps the little gap in the spark plug, we're going to go back to something that's been a recurring theme in a lot of the videos we've been going over, and that is electromagnetism. The idea that if you run a current through a wire, it will generate a magnetic field and inversely if you pass a magnetic field across or through a wire it will generate voltage. Uh, both are at work here in the coil so let's take a look at the pieces that, that are going to be major players in this and then we'll talk about exactly how they work together. So this right here represents how you will typically see a uh, ignition coil or an ignition coil represented on a wiring diagram. You'll see two coils and you'll see two lines in between the two coils that you know look like they kind of face each other. Now the side that is connected to your ECM, PCM, ICM, whatever happens to be controlling it uh, and rece receives voltage and a ground that is going to be your primary coil. That is the low voltage side. That's the side that's used to start the process and generate the spark it is uh, sorry it's the one that's controlled by the computer and that's where all of the work starts so that's where we're going to start when we look at the process next to it you will see the secondary coil the secondary coil which is the one that goes out through the spark plug wire or through the coil inside a spark plug boot on a uh, coil over plug setup this is the one that's going to generate the high voltage and send it out to the spark plug so that it can jump the gap. Now, in this, we only have it represented as a battery giving it voltage because there's so many different options and different ways that they do it. I, I couldn't represent all of them on one board. Uh, the board is cluttered enough. So, when we come to the other side of the primary coil, uh, we have our ECM, PCM, ICM, like I said, whatever's controlling it, there's going to be an ignition coil control driver. All a driver is, is an on-off switch. Is It's what the computer uses to turn the circuit on and turn it off. And uh, it's going to, in this instance, the way we've got it drawn and the way a lot of them are controlled is, it's going to turn on and turn off the ground path for the coil. So, primary coil, secondary coil, these two lines in here typically represent the iron core that's placed inside the secondary coil inside the ignition coil. Um, power source, ground control. Uh, we're not going to go too far into that because all you need to know is that it turns it on and it turns it off. So, step one, the driver has not grounded the coil and started the dwell time. Now, the dwell time is the amount of time that the coil, the primary coil, is energized, turned on, allowed to build its magnetic field uh, before it's shut off to generate the high voltage spark. That's your dwell time, the amount of time that the coil is on prior to being shut off to create the high voltage. So that's a state it's in, just you know, sitting there in between sparking. It's, it, it's not grounded. There's voltage present all the way through the coil up to this point in the driver because it is a complete circuit, but it's, it's just like any other switch. It's not turned on, so there's no ground path. The coil's not doing anything. Our next step, the driver grounds the coil and begins the dwell, and the primary coil builds a magnetic field that also surrounds a secondary coil. So, this switch turns on. Now we have a power source to a coil and a ground path. So this coil is now energized and it's going to start to build a magnetic field. And that magnetic field is going to also encompass the secondary coil because it's usually 
uh, a sleeve with the primary coil and then right inside that sleeve is another sleeve of coil that's a secondary coil and in the middle of those you've got the iron core that is there to help concentrate the magnetic field uh, as it builds. It helps concentrate that magnetic field right there around the secondary coil so that we can step the voltage up even higher. So, now that we've got the, uh, the magnetic field built, the stage is set to create our high voltage. All we have to do is shut the switch off. The driver breaks the ground circuit to the primary coil, which causes the magnetic field to collapse. That's the key thing here, because now that magnetic field is going to collapse across the secondary coil, generating voltage in all of the windings of the coil, and creating the high voltage spark that jumps the gap in the spark plug. So, as, my, as, we say, as the magnetic field collapses, it travels very quickly through the secondary coil, creating a high voltage in the coil, which jumps the gap of the spark plug. A little redundant there, sorry. So, why does the second coil create such higher voltage than the primary coil? Because the primary coil may have a couple hundred, one or two hundred windings uh, at most, maybe. It's a lower number of windings and it's a thicker gauge wire because it carries more amperage. Now when we say more amperage, we're, you know, we're not talking like 30, 40, 50 amps. I mean, these are, this is low amperage because it is still being controlled by a computer and the computers cannot directly control a ton of amperage. So that's the primary coil. The secondary coil, that's where the, the key ingredient to getting the high voltage is. The secondary coil is literally thousands of windings of very fine insulated uh, copper wire. It's, it's got a coating on it that insulates it from itself so it doesn't just short straight through. But it is literally thousands of windings. Some are 20 or 30,000 windings. And with that many windings, it's essentially traveling through 20,000, 30,000 wires because that magnetic field collapses across all of those windings just like that, like quicker than that actually. So it's got a magnetic field built by a, a lower coil or a lower number of winding coil but when it collapses it collapses through a super high number of windings so that's where you get the high voltage the amperage is super super low almost non-existent but you've got the high voltage and that's what it takes to jump the gap in the spark plug so that coil is it's represented here just going to ground because the ground is typically how it uses the path it goes out of the coil through the spark plug jumps the gap uh, because as it comes through the core it's insulated from the body of the plug uh, spark plug travels straight through the center to that center electrode and then this side arm is connected to the body which is bolted into the head and that will provide the ground path so it has no choice but to jump that little air gap to make it to ground and when it reaches the threshold that it has enough voltage to make that jump it will make it and if your coil is not generating enough voltage to jump that gap then it's not going to spark and your car is likely not going to start so um, things to remember about this is uh, inductance which is the coil because of the way it's set up, the fact that it's a coil and it's going to have a bit of inherent resistance to changing current as the current is applied to it, it's not like instantly on. You're not instantly at the maximum current drawn. It is a slow ramp up, which helps us as technicians because we can look at the current of a oh, sorry of an ignition coil and we can determine if that coil is in you know, the primary side if it's in good shape or if it's shorted because we want to see a very slow steady ramp up sometimes to a point sometimes to a flat top depending on the style but the uh, the fact that you've got a coil that's going to have its own resistance to building the magnetic field or sorry building the current level in it and sometimes an internal resistor older coils had a resistor wire that ran to it a lot of coils will have a resistor in them to limit the current flow so that you don't have super high current flowing through the oh excuse me through the uh, driver inside the computer and uh, the as I said the current will appear in a steady ramp as it overcomes the resistance to current change in the coil so 
what you're going to see, if you look at this on a uh, graphing multimeter or lab scope, probably a lab scope because you have to get down to like a 10 millisecond sweep to look at this stuff happening. You'll see uh, system voltage, which will be about 12 to 14 volts on the wire coming out that goes to the computer. Now, to look at that pattern that we're going to talk about and I'm going to show you, you have to be on the wire that's controlling like the ground side because up here, all you're going to see throughout the entire thing is 12 steady volts, 12 or 14 volts steady. But once this ground path is completed, now this should consume all of the voltage and your voltage should drop to zero. That's where you're going to see it turn, that's where you're going to see it turn on. But if you're on this side of it, you're not going to see anything. You're only going to see it turn on if you're down here on this side. Oops, that didn't work out very well, did it? So, and at the same time, if you can look at the uh, current ramp, you'll see the current start at nothing and slowly build up until this driver breaks the circuit. Then you'll see the voltage shoot way up because even though this is limited by sometimes an external capacitor and the fact that it's still hooked into the 12 volt system uh, you're going to get a voltage spike in the primary coil it's not 20 30 40 50 thousand volts like some of uh, the secondary coils but you're going to get a voltage spike and it's not uncommon to see 70 80 100 volts in the primary coil uh, but it's just for less than one millisecond and it dissipates itself. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go out to a vehicle where I've got the uh, lab scope set up and we're going to look at what we see as this process takes place. All right, the vehicle we have that we're working on is a 2002 Honda Passport uh, with a 3.2 V6. And it's real easy on these because we've got a coil on plug and I can get to the control wires for it very easily. So I'm going to show you real quick how I've got this set up that, you know, so we can look at what we're going to be looking at and then we'll start it up and we'll see what this coil is doing on the lab scope. Okay, to look at the primary side, the control wire, I've got it back probed at the coil uh, and this is going to be the yellow trace on the lab scope. Okay, and we're fortunate enough on this system that we have a single fuse in the fuse box that controls all of the, or supplies power to all of the ignition coils. So I was able to just simply remove that fuse and put an adapter that I have in there and put my amp probe right there. Yes, the amp probe is actually going to be seeing all of the current ramps for all of the coils, but because we're going to trigger it off of the primary side that we're looking at, the only one we're going to actually see on our display is going to be the one we're looking at. So let's go look at the lab scope. Okay, sorry for the glare. Uh, I'm trying to block it a little bit. But I'm going to start it up and I've got the trigger set up, or I should have the trigger set up, so that we can take a look at our pattern and see it appear. Let me start it real quick. may need to turn the... Uh, Okay, there's a good pattern. All right, so let me uh, cut down on the noise. Let me pause this here real quick. And I will shut the vehicle off so we can hear a little bit better. Okay, so I hope you can see here, um, yellow numbers indicate our uh, yellow trace which is the one we have on the primary control side and we can see it's running a little bit over 10 volts about 12 to 14 volts and when that driver turns on that's this point right here and it drops down to zero volts because the coil has consumed all of the voltage and it holds it on for looks like maybe one and a half milliseconds is the dwell time in this case and we can see that as soon as the driver turns the uh, turns the coil on the current starts to ramp up very slowly see it's not an instant you know maximum current it's very slow because the coil resists changes in current so this current ramps up and ramps up and ramps up ramps up sorry until the coil turn or the driver turns the coil off then we see this voltage spike that comes up and it looks like it hits about 50 to 55 volts maybe 
and right at that very instant as soon as it shuts it off the current goes away because the coil is no longer turned on and it returns at say zero until the next time this coil comes on and then this is actually uh, I know a lot of people say you can't but you can actually get a pretty good idea of what the secondary you know high voltage side looks like by looking at the voltage that feeds back into the uh, primary circuit you get a real good idea uh, for those of you who are familiar with older secondary patterns ignition patterns uh, you can see some of the same information in here um, so that's actually a really good thing to remember is that you can see the secondary on the primary uh, for the most part so it's uh, it's actually very easy to set out here you when you set this up you can see if your driver's turning it on you can see if this doesn't come all the way down to zero volts or uh, if you know you have resistance it might not come all the way down meaning that you're not building as strong of a magnetic field which means you may not get as strong of a spark um, you can see the ramp come up on the the sorry the current come up on the uh, on the coil so if if you saw this shoot way up have a straight up line right here and then ramp a little bit then you know that you have a shorter coil or if this barely moved at all any then you know that that coil for whatever reason may not be uh, building the field that it's supposed to because the current's not moving so a lot of this can get you a, a real good idea of the health of a coil just by taking a look at the uh, voltage and current ramp patterns so uh, let's go ahead and wrap this video up all right so that pretty much wraps up the video um, I really hope that you've got a good understanding of how an ignition coil works uh, how it uses you know the properties of electromagnetism to generate the high voltage needed to jump the gap in the spark plug uh, thank you for taking the time to watch the video thank you for being a part of this and this channel uh, feel free to subscribe check out some of the other videos we have on the channel and I will see you next time